Okay, from the NBA to small business, everyone wants to recruit top talent, but how can companies retain employees, especially in a tight job market? Joining us now is Tom Gimbel, CEO of LaSalle Network, an employment staffing and recruiting firm. So what about sabbaticals? Are people offering that up, Tom? Yeah, they're a great tool. However, the amount of turnover after 10 years is so much <clears throat> less than in the first five years. You're actually offering rewards to people that would stay with you no matter what. So it's a wonderful thing to offer, and it's great to take care of your employees, but it really doesn't decrease the attrition rate. Interesting. Huh. That's one way to look at it. I'm surprised. But it's a good productivity thing. Yeah. In fact, I can tell you a little story, which is back, um, I think it was American Express back in the 1880s that offered the first two-week vacation. Tom, am I wrong about this? And they said, take it all together because more time together enhances the workers' productivity. That's something they knew in the 19th century. We appear to have forgotten in the 21st. I mean, the, the problem is we're true, too busy as a society trying to tell everybody what the best way for them to recharge their batteries. If somebody needs to take a three-day weekend and do that two or three times a quarter and somebody else wants to take one week off a quarter if you have four weeks vacation, who cares? Let people do what works for them. If people want to motivate themselves by working more and go f harder and faster in a shorter period of time to make more money and get promoted, that's a plus. So, Tom, Let, I mean, there, tell us yeah. some of the stuff that they're throwing at these younger workers yeah. now. What, a millennials board. what, a millennials what, what are they getting? That's what I want to know. Cookies. Well, I think it's the, ex it, 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 listen, all the perks are becoming neutral. If you go into Silicon Valley, or you go into Boston on the East Coast and New York and you see, you can bring your dog to work. You can wear shorts and flip-flops. There's food to table, gourmet kitchens, all of these things. If every perk is offered by every high growth, huge valuation company, then it becomes neutral. The real question is, if it's neutral, how do you keep the people? And that is through teaching them more, investing more in training and development, holding them accountable, and giving them career paths. Because after two or three years of the perks, it's how people stay emotionally engaged in the work. Right. They don't just stay for the free lunch. If you're going to get it everywhere, then why, 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 why do why? you need it? Tom, how tight is the job market right now, and where are you seeing the, the, the most tightness? Steve, it's the best job market I've seen. I've been in the industry almost 25 years. It's the best job market I've ever seen. It is, it is becoming, the quit rate is the highest that it's ever been, meaning people are quitting jobs without having another one because they feel that they can get one very easily. It's a very strong indicator. And what companies need to do is make sure that they have a training and development program. I know I'm hitting on that a lot, but it, to have that so they can hire workers and train them on their way of doing things. What is the quit rate? Wait, what's the measure? What's the number they use? Oh, I, we, well, I actually get it from BLS and other data. reports. Oh, yeah, it's okay. a government data so, report. Right. And, and just so people understand, the quit rate is something that goes up when people are feeling really feeling good about confident. their right, jobs. Right. They're like, I'm out of here. Wait, yeah. what did I just say? I can get a new job. So, so tell me about where, where I can take my dog you take my dog to work day and, 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 and flip-flops and shorts and so forth. Do you, are, are those workers more productive or less productive than, peop, than in places where maybe there's the, uh, a... a a stricter dress code is the norm, or does? Or do I don't know? think I, I don't think the perks are about productivity. The perks are about attracting people. So if mm -hmm. you've got two jobs and all things are equal, money, location, and everything else, do you want to go to work at a place that you have to spend a couple thousand dollars on dress clothes, or where you can wear shorts or bring your dog? And then when it becomes equal, yeah. that everything's the same, then it becomes irrelevant. No one wants to see my toes. I don't. Uh, that's, that's, I don't that's, think it's a productivity issue, though. I don't think that actually has any relevance. That I mean, we can study all you want, and we can get the HBR review and and everything else, but Tom, it's not about productivity. Tom, are there any signs of a top? When there's a signal that you can bring your dog to work, it strikes me that when things get <laughs> silly, you want to be a little careful peak here. Peak job market. Mm -hmm. peak, are we, Steve, are we, I, th I we think peak what, hamburger I th before. Is this peak jobs? Well, it is peak jobs. What I'm really waiting for is the first lawsuit by an employee who's allergic to dogs and when they sue for that. That's going to be a tell. I think that's interesting. That's interesting. We're going to watch there, for that. There, there are I things. Think, I think, I think what, then, we'll know, then we'll know that the perks have tipped over on reality. There, there, there are things when, when, people get, when things get crazy that tells you we're near that a top. I don't know if bringing the dog is it, but could be.